Hello, in this tutorial we're going to review two-dimensional arrays and discuss how we can do some simple operations such as defining them, adding up all of the values in the array to generate a sum and an average, and also how to process an entire row and an entire column in the array. So very similar to our one-dimensional arrays, we're going to use the bracket notation, but for the two-dimensional arrays we're really looking to generate a table of information. So we're just going to use two brackets. Uh, one set to define the rows and the other the columns or vice versa. As long as you're consistent in how you're using them then it doesn't matter whether you're doing row major or column major. Okay, so let's say that I'd like to create a new two-dimensional array. We'll call it uh, data and this is a 2D array of integers and like the one-dimensional array I can define how large I'd like my array but the only difference here is that I need to specify both uh, dimensions. So what I'm saying here is I want 20 columns and then 10 rows for this array. What I'm going to do is fill in this array with random values. So I'm going to need a new random for that. And since it's complaining to me, I'll just right click and say fix the imports. And that adds the Java util random into my program. And then I'm going to use a loop structure to fill in the two-dimensional array that I'm calling data. Now I'm going to use a 2D array, or sorry, a, a doubly embedded loop. The first, if I wanted to go across all of the columns, I could simply write a for loop like so. But in addition to going across all the columns, I want to also go across all the rows. So inside of this outer for loop, I'm going to need to specify that I have a row. And I've got 10 such rows based on my definition here. So I've got 20 columns and then 10 rows. And then I can just say that the data of the column of the row is equal to r dot next int and let's specify that we want random integers between 0 and 9. Okay, so at this point we have the array defined and then we have a for loop and then another for loop inside of that that's going to fill in every single cell in this two-dimensional array with random values. Now let's uh, display the array. Again, I'm going to need to use a two-dimensional for loop and now the work I want to do, rather than filling in the value within the column row cell of data, I want to do a system out print on the data of the column of the row. We'll add a space there. And notice I'm using the system out print because I want all of my values to display adjacent to each other on the same line for a single row. And then to go down to the next line, I'm just going to do the print line to get me down to the next cell or the next line in my output. Okay, so let's run this and see what we get. Very nice, we've got our values here randomly placed into the array. Uh, there's a bit of an error here though, and I did this intentionally just to drive the point home that we need to think about how we're accessing and dealing with the array. Notice my outer loop is going across the columns, and I have 20 of those, so in fact every single line is a column. I've rotated the array by 90 degrees. So I can fill it in either way, but when I want to display, I need to go row by row in the display. So let's invert these. I'm just uh, cutting and pasting. Okay, And now I'm going to go um, row by row in the outer for loop and then column by column so that the entire row will be displayed across here before we go down to the next line. And if we run now, what we'll get is 20 columns and 10 rows of random values. Very good. Okay, well let's actually extract this because I'm doing a couple of different things inside of main and I'm going to make use of this ability to display an array. Let's create a separate method. I'm going to call it uh, display array. 
and it's going to take in a two-dimensional array. And I'll call that data. Okay, and then I'm just going to pull out this information that I've got here, this code that I've already written. And let me get rid of that uh, bracket as well and put it down here. All right, missed that. Okay, so now I'm taking in the data and I'm iterating across row and column. The trouble with this is that I've hard coded the values 10 and 20. So if we leave it alone for now and we just invoke display data, you can see that I can pass a two dimensional array into a method and then process that just like I would do with a one dimensional array. The only difference, of course, is that. I need to have my double brackets. And if we run, we get the exact same output, albeit the numbers are different because they're randomized, but everything seems to be working okay. The trouble with this is that it presumes that this data array is a 20 by 10. And there's nothing that says that we have to uh, use a 20 by 10 array. So we can actually count the columns and the rows by using our length property. And you'll notice what I'm going to do at this point is use the length property of data to determine how many columns I have and the data sub zero dot length to determine how many rows I have. So the data dot length is going to return me the dimension of the total array. In this case that would be 20. And the data sub zero is actually a singly dimension array it's one of these 20, and it's going to tell me, uh, in this case, if I say data sub zero dot length, it's going to tell me how many rows I have, or what's the dimension, or how long is the, uh, the first entry in this 2D array. So you can think of a two-dimensional array as nothing more than an array of arrays. And that's exactly what the notation is showing here, and we can process it like so, and use the length command to determine uh, or the length property to determine how long the array is. So now there's nothing that's uh, setting this up as a uh, 20 by 10. This could be any sized array and this method is going to work. So if we run this, we get the exact correct output that we would expect, but our method is nice and versatile now. We can pass it any array that we'd like. Uh, to prove that point, let's create another integer and I want to say uh, define this actually with hard-coded values and uh, to do that I'm just going to paste in something that I've already got here to save us a bit of time. And I'm going to call this uh, candy sales. I'm going to say that I have this, so I've just pasted these values in that I'd already typed in elsewhere. The candy sales is a two-dimensional array of integers and it's storing this uh, series of rows this is actually a 5 by 4, and I know that that's the dimensionality because I have, consider this a single array. Notice the candy sales starts and ends here, and like I could initialize a one-dimensional array, I can initialize a two-dimensional array. The difference is that I have an array of arrays. So here are my individual arrays, and I'm putting them all together, separating them out with commas, using my curly bracket notation, and this is how I can establish a two-dimensional array and hard code those values together. If we want to see what this would look like, I can display array on candy sales. And let's just do a system out println on that just to separate them. And if I run this, what we get is our original 20 by 10, but here now we have our 5 by 4 as well. And it shows the values that I initialized with. So this shows you how to define an array and initialize the values all at the same time. And this also confirms that our display array is using the proper lengths to generate the correct output. This display array will work with any two-dimensional array of integers. So if we assume 
that this candy sales information has sales information about, uh, let's say, four different types of candy bars. Maybe this is Snickers, Almond Joy, uh, Three Musketeers, and Zagnut. And each one of these rows perhaps is a... Um, Now if you stop and think for a moment and look at the output of this 2D array and the initialization of this 2D array, you'll notice something interesting. It looks like we're defining a single row here with four columns and there would be five such rows, but the output indicates that we have five columns and four rows. This is because the first dimension of the 2D array definition is the columns. That's what we're using. And the second would be rows by the way that we're processing and displaying things here. Now if that's the case, then the dimension of the columns should be five because I have one, two, three, four, and five, and that's exactly what we get here in the output. So again, just be sure that you're careful in, even though it might look like this, 50, 90, 40, and 33 is 50, 90, 40, and 33. This is a single column, even though this looks like a single row. So be sure to define these differently if the output you wanted was actually four columns and five rows. With that said, let's actually do something interesting on this candy sales 2D array. Let's assume that we have five different types of candy bars and maybe four different states. So this might be the 50, might, 50 90, 40, and 33 might be the sales of Almond Joy and 20, 10, 15, and 19 might be the sales of Three Musketeers and the first row might be Georgia, the second might be Florida, the third might be Alabama, and the fourth might be Tennessee. So let's say we've got all of these different sales information, and I'd like to know how many total candy bars we sold. Well, no problem, we can do a two-dimensional for loop, but let's go ahead and, and set this up as a separate method. And I'm going to return an integer here out of this. I'm going to take in a two-dimensional array and I'll call it data. Okay, so we'll call this method getSum and it's going to return an int. And I'm going to just do a loop. Let's go ahead and uh, copy this. because We've already got the structure there for this. We're going to have an int sum that I'll initialize to zero. And then for every row and for every column, the work I'm going to do is simply to say that the sum is going to be increased by data here at column of row. Okay? And then at the end of my loop, I can just simply return the sum. So a real simple function. It initializes, it takes in a two-dimensional array. It then initializes a sum and does a two-dimensional for loop across all of the cells and it adds up the values into this sum and then it just returns it. So if I wanted to, I could do something like system out uh, println total sales is equal to, and let's say we've got total sales variable here. And we'll say total sales is equal to get sum on candy sales. Okay, so candy sales is our array. Total sales I'm going to store, and then I'm just going to display this out. Okay, great. So here's our candy sales. I'm going to display that out. We'll then get the sum to figure out how much total sales, or just the summation of all the values in the array, and uh, then we'll just print this back out to the user. So if we run, we'll get that the total sales was 1,007, or maybe this is in millions. So we sold a billion candy bars or some such thing. Not bad. In addition to generating a total sum by adding up all of the values, we can also generate a summation across a single row. So let's modify our display array to do that. And let's add the ability to calculate the sum across a row. 
we'll initialize our sum to be zero inside of our outer loop. So for each row, I'm going to initialize sum. And then the work, in addition to displaying, I'm just going to increase the sum by data of column and row, just like I did before in this previous summation. But now I'm not doing a summation across an entire array. I'm doing a summation across a single array. Not, not both dimensions, but just a single dimension. And when I do the println here, I could say something to the effect of the sum is equal to the sum. Okay. Now what I'll get is at the end of my output, when I display the array, it will add up a single line of values and display the sum out here. Notice that if I forgot to reset sum to zero, then I'm going to get incorrect values. So let's run this now and see what we get. Okay, we scroll up a bit, and if you add up all of these numbers, you should get 62. And if you added up all of these numbers, you should get 69. And that's exactly what our work here in display array is doing. We can also see that since we modified our display array and we're displaying our, not only our random 2D array, but also our candy bar sales array information, we can see that we sold 252 uh, in, let's say, Georgia, 260 in Florida, 271 in Alabama, and 224 here in, I think we said Tennessee for that last. And if you add up this entire, uh, all of these sums, you should get 1,007, which is the overall sum. So 2 plus 1 and 4 is in fact 7, and 5, 6, and 3, and 2. We carry, looks good, looks like it's working out nicely. Okay, very good. The last thing I'd like to do is modify my display array to not only display the sum across a single row, but let's take the average of the columns and display the averages down here. Okay, let's just extend this out. So after I display my array, let's do a system out println and just create a kind of a nice bar here at the end. Okay. And I'm going to have a column summation. What I'm going to do is just iterate across all of the columns and iterate across all the rows within that column and then create a sum and divide by uh, the length. So we'll need our outer loop is going to be across the row again. In this case, the outer loop is going to be across the columns because I want to go across each column. And then I'm going to initialize the column sum to be zero. And then iterate across all the rows. So this is going across the columns first and then the rows, whereas in my earlier 2D loop, I had rows and then columns. The reason for this is that I need to sum up the columns. So this is just increasing column sum by the cell that I'm visiting and just go down a particular column row by row and adding that up. As soon as I'm done with that, I can then display my column sum divided by data sub zero dot length, which is going to give me the height of my 2D array. So this is the number of rows, which is what I want to divide by to get the average. And let's just add a space in there. And when we're done with this, we need to go down. All right, so Ah, nope, I was right the first time. Outside here. So we're going to go across all the columns and calculate the sum and then divide by the height. And that's going to give us the average. We're going to print those out. And then when we're finished printing out all of our averages here, we're going to go down to the next line. All right, let's run this and see what we get now. If we scroll up, you see that we've got our random array. We still have our summation across a single row. And if we look down the column here, there's three and two and six and eight and zero, five, four, two, two, and four. The average of that would be three. Uh, remember we're doing integer divisions, so we'd get a rounding there. We could do the same per, per row. All of these averages should work out. 
The next thing I'd like to do is show you how we can generate and return an array from within a function. So here we've got an array that's coming in that we're reading from, and we're reading the array as a parameter in the display array as well. But let's create a new method that's going to return a 2D array, right? And we'll call this build array that takes no parameters. And it's just a simple example. I'm going to take the code I had for this candy sales and put it in here. Okay, let's call this uh, temp now. And since this function is expecting to return something, I'll just return temp. All right, it's not a complicated function. Certainly, uh, this is just doing one or two commands, but I wanted to show that we can actually return a two-dimensional array from a, a method as well. And then up here, I could say, Candy sales is a two-dimensional integer array, and I'm going to initialize it using the build array function. So build array is going to come down here, and it's going to give these values and put that into the candy sales uh, 2D array. It's going candy sales will refer to this this space. Okay, let's run, and we get the exact output that we had before, which is exactly what we wanted. The intention here is just to show that we can return a 2D array from a function. Okay, at this point you should understand how to define an array, a two-dimensional array, using a 2D for loop, be able to initialize that array with, in this case, random values. We can pass 2D arrays into methods. We can also take and uh, get 2D arrays back from methods. And we can initialize 2D arrays very similar to our one-dimensional arrays using our curly bracket notation. We've got some examples on how to calculate the overall sum, as well as individual sums across uh, a single row, and how to generate the average across a single column. I'm going to highlight all of this and actually replace it with some other code that I have here that's a bit more complicated but it demonstrates these same principles in a really nice way. So let's look at what I've got here. Now, I've got a one-dimensional array called states of type string, and this is going to be useful for me to display some information. So all of the 50 states plus DC is in this, so it's actually a 51-dimensional uh, array, or a 1D array with 51 entries. And here's the two-dimensional array of integers that discusses purchase data uh, again, for the candy bar sales. So here I've got four different kinds of candy bars and sales data across the 51 states in DC. Nothing new here, it's just more more data, but still an initialization of a 2D array like we just saw. I'm going to use my formatter so that I can display in really nice columns in my text output, and I'm going to display some a, a horizontal line essentially here, and then iterate across all of the states, all 51 states in DC, and then iterate across all the product lines. So this is going to just display the state, which will be a the first column in my output, and then this row, or this for loop, is going to display the next four columns, which will be the purchase information. They're just displaying out how much sales were done. Notice I'm also summing across all the products to generate a total sales on a per state basis and displaying that out. So that's going to be very similar to what we did earlier in generating a summation across a single row. I'm doing the exact same thing there. And I have a print totals function that I'll call, which actually iterates across a single column for each one of my products, Snickers, M&Ms, Zagnut, and Almond Joy I'm, I'm using in this example. And so you'll see that I'm iterating across sales sub i of 0, sales sub i of 1, sub i of 2, and sub i of 3, uh, going across all of the different columns there. So really quickly, I'm not going to belabor this because you can see the code, and it's really nothing different from what we'd previously done, but you can see here that I've got a really nice output. The state is in the first column, how many sales were in, done in Snickers, on M&Ms, on Zagnut, and Almond Joy, and then you can see the summation here across the entire row for the statewide sales. So Alabama sold, in this case, 119,315. And if we scroll down, you can also see total sales done across each of the product lines, which would be a 
total column summation. So which one's selling the most? It looks like Almond Joy is beating everybody out uh, with about 2.1 million in sales. Okay, and that's just a different example on how to process 2D arrays. This tutorial should have helped you better understand and review how to access and define and manipulate and display two-dimensional array data.